Hey everyone, my name is Aronak, back with another video and in this tutorial you are going to learn about the hypothesis testing construction. So this is the 12th video in this series of the statistics for CS applications. So let's get started. So the first step that we are going to consider like I am going to tell you about the four steps first and then I am going to cover each and every step in depth along with an example so that you will get the better intuition of how the hypothesis testing works. So the first is formulating hypothesis, second is calculating the statistic. Third is evaluating significance value for the cutoff region. Third is the decision. Fourth, I'm sorry. The fourth one is the decision. So first of all, let us start with the formulating hypothesis. Null hypothesis is denoted by H0. So basically the terminology of the hypothesis and everything I've covered in the earlier tutorial. If you don't know, you can just check that tutorial if you have missed out on that one because that one is, I would say, the prerequisite of this tutorial. And uh, what you can do is just uh, go in the description box below and you can have that video. I posted the link of the entire playlist so you can just go over there it is the 11th video this is the 12th one so the first step is formulating hypothesis in which the null hypothesis is denoted by h0 the alternating hypothesis is denoted by h of subscript a and apart from that now i can show you an a little bit of example i would say with which you will come to know what is the difference between the null and alternative hypothesis so example is person a wants to test the income of software development engineer in united states as a fresher is more than hundred thousand dollars per year so in that case h of 0 that is my null hypothesis is basically equal to $100,000 and alternative hypothesis is definitely going to be greater than so the mu the mean is going to be greater than $100,000 the reason is person wants to test the income of SD in US as a fresher is more than $100,000 so, so that more than specifies that the mu is going to be more than $100,000 so I have covered this in the confidence interval itself but still I am going to cover it once more for your better understanding. So if the population standard deviation is known, like if we have the population standard deviation I am going to use the z statistic and this is the formula. So z statistic is equal to x of bar minus mu divided by sigma that is my set standard deviation, population standard deviation divided by under root n. So under root n is the number of samples x, x bar is the uh, sampling mean okay the average of the samples and mu mu is my predefined sample mean that I have not sample I would say the population mean that I have in my problem itself apart from that if the population standard deviation is not known okay so standard deviation the population standard deviation here is unknown so in that case we use the t statistic and this is the formula okay so the only thing that replaces from the z statistic in the formula is the sigma the sigma is replaced with the small s and that small s indicates sample standard deviation okay so we don't have a population standard deviation over here we use the sample standard deviation now next is calculating the significance value generally one to five percent significant level is predetermined okay that is the significance level if you are confused with the terminology of the significance level you can check my tutorial that i have made earlier that is the 11 tutorial in this playlist you can have that in the description box below you will you can just click on the link and you will get the entire playlist so that is the 11th video this is the 12th video okay so please 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 i would say they refer to that one because that is the prerequisite of this video and this is how the significance value is determined okay so what you all can see in the diagram is that we have rejection in the left in the right and on the both sides okay so those are the three cases in which our hypothesis is determined okay so we determine the significance value significance value is basically how far my particular problem is significant and that significance value is given by 1 minus alpha and whatever value we have in the alpha that is the critical region and i've got this from this uh, particular source okay so i was searching for for some significance value now the last process is the decision so if the evaluation lies beyond the given test statistic critical region level reject the null hypothesis so so this is the thing you will actually get this one when i'll be covering the example okay so don't worry at the moment if the evaluation lies within the given test statistic critical region level accept the null hypothesis so this is also one of the thing okay this is completely theoretical uh, in the in few moments i am going to cover an example example okay so example is going to give you the better intuition i would say rejecting the null hypothesis itself indicates accepting the alternate hypothesis okay so if you reject the null hypothesis that itself indicates that you are accepting the alternate hypothesis and vice versa okay so we accept the if we are accepting the null hypothesis that itself indicates rejection of the alternate hypothesis so now some of the important rules before hopping on to the example actually i wanted to cover the example about what i did i felt like i should be covering these rules because those are going to be pretty much useful for you and are going to give a better intuition of the example i would say so if someone buys so this is an example okay so 
सो इफ सम वन बाइज पटेटोज फॉर ट्वेंटी आई एन आर बट यू आर ट्राइंग टू रेक्टिफाई द प्राइस दैट इज वेदर इट इज ट्रू और नॉट दैट इज द रेक्टिफिकेशन ओके यू वॉन्ट टू चेक दैट इफ द पर्सन दैट हैज गॉट द पटेटोज फॉर ट्वेंटी इज इज एक्चुअली ट्वेंटी और नॉट लाइक इज द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द पर पर्सन मेड इज ट्रू और फॉल्स इन दैट केस यूर अल्टरनेट एंड नल हाइपोथिस ओके सो your null hypothesis is going to be equal to so mu equal to some of the value that you are going to get from a problem apart from that the alternate hypothesis states that the value is not equal to the particular value of the mean that has been stated and this comes under the two tail test what is two tail test this is two tail test okay the one you can see in the bottom so if someone buys potatoes for 20 but you believe you can get it for 18 okay so basically the value you can get is less in that case this is a right tail why because h of uh, not mu is equal to 20 and h of alternate is basically less than 20 because you can get it for 18 like you said so this is a right tailed one test okay this is a right tail test similarly if someone buys potatoes for 20 but you usually get it for 21 okay so you here have a loss of 1 rupee and that you are going to rectify in that case you are H not mu is equal to twenty and H of alternate where mu is greater than twenty. Why? Because it is twenty one. Okay, you get it for twenty one. You want to check that you can get it for greater than twenty or you cannot. Okay, so this is a left tail one tail test. Okay, so these are some of the basic rules. And now let us start with the example. So example for better intuition, I I have taken this example from research methodology book. Okay, C R Kotari, chapter ten, testing of hypothesis, example ten point one. This is it. So let us look at the example now. A survey done ten years ago of the C P A S. So C P A S basically certified public accountant. Okay, in U S. Found that their average salary was seventy four nine hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. So that was the average salary they took. Okay, so that is the assumption they are making. Okay, that ten years ago, the US found that their average salary was seventy four nine hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. That was the salary, and they are making an assumption. An accounting researcher would like to test whether over the years this average has increased or not. In that case, a sample of so he did a test. Okay, his own test. For rectification, that definitely it is more than seventy-four thousand nine hundred and fourteen. So sample of hundred and twelve CPAs produced at a mean salary. Okay, so mean salary of seventy-eight thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. Okay, so that was the price that was given basically because he wanted to hypothetically check it that the assumption made by the US, the survey, basically the survey of the US ten years ago is wrong. So for that reason, he has done and he has taken hundred and twelve CPAs. Sample. Okay, so he went to the hundred and twelve CPAs and asked them their salary, and he took a mean of those. Okay, so that was around seventy eight thousand nine seventy eight thousand six hundred ninety five. Okay, dollars thousand dollars. Also, given that the population standard deviation is fourteen thousand five hundred thirty dollars. So, formulating the hypothesis. So, my null hypothesis is H not, which is mu is less than or uh, I'm sorry, yeah, mu is less than or equal to seventy four thousand nine hundred fourteen. Why? My average salary was seventy four thousand nine hundred fourteen. so that average is not supposed to you know go beyond that because the survey says like the person is trying to rectify that the salary has increased so definitely the salary the average salary that is the mu is 74914 so the salaries that are there in the first place are going to be less than that mu is less than or equal to 74914 then we have the alternate hypothesis which states that mu is greater than 74919 that is my alternate hypothesis because the person that has done the survey says that it is 78695 next step calculating the test statistic after formulating the hypothesis we move on to the second step that is calculating the test statistic but now here we are going to use the z statistic why because i have my population standard deviation if If there was a case where I don't have population standard deviation or my samples are less than thirty, definitely I would use t statistic. But here, let us just stick with the z statistic. So from the given x bar is equal to seventy eight thousand six hundred ninety five mu. That is my average mean taken of the null hypothesis is seventy four thousand nine hundred and fourteen. Standard deviation is fourteen thousand five hundred and thirty, and n is equal to one hundred and twelve. So I have my formula for z statistic like I discussed. I just replace the values and I have my test statistic, which is two point seven five three nine. That is my test statistic. Now let us move on to the significance level. So this is the significance level. So what I will be doing is for confidence level of ninety five percent, I am going to test it. So my significance level over here is going to be five percent. Okay, so my alpha that I get, 
the alpha is basically the significance constant okay so it is five percent so i am willing to take a five percent risk in order to rectify my hypothesis so here one minus alpha is equal to 0 0.95 alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and so the value that i get the critical value the critical value is basically the value that you get from your significance value after declaring the confidence and for that for five percent my critical value is 1.645 after that let us move on to the decision that is the next step okay so first what i did i formulated the hypothesis i calculated the test statistic apart from that what i did was the significance level estimation so basically i took the significance level i declared the critical critical value now my critical value is 1.645 and my test statistic value is above that okay so now let us see what is going to be my decision so computed value using the z statistic is 2.7539 critical value at five percent level of significance is 1.645 now since computed value is greater than the critical value see the computed value of the z statistic is greater than my critical value okay this itself here shows that there is a loophole and we have to take a decision now so on that 2.7539 is greater than 1.645 this indicates that it falls beyond that so it falls in the critical region and not before the critical region okay it doesn't fall in the significant value so this itself indicates that i am going to reject my null hypothesis my null hypothesis is not valid and i am going to prefer my alternating hypothesis which states that the salaries are increased over the period of time okay the survey done 10 years ago has been gone out of standards and the salary of the cpas has been increased from 74919 so this is the conclusion that we have the verdict okay so since z statistic value has exceeded significance level the null hypothesis is rejected and alternate hypothesis is accepted this concludes according to the researcher the salaries have increased and this is it about the this video i don't know what i'll be covering in the next video but i'll just see okay i might go on to the non-parametric test or i might also explore a lot of hypothesis testing but this was the construction okay and uh, yeah if you like this video please do like and share and subscribe to my channel okay because that is definitely going to make me happy that is the best thing you can do okay and i'll try my level best with my best belief and knowledge to provide you this stuff that i have okay so i think i should be winding up right now so thank you for watching goodbye